Thank you, Vicki, and the Bells for calling us to worship. Welcome to all of you who've gathered here, guests and visitors alike, and those of you who've joined us online. Just a, a quick announcement about our Project 320. Last Sunday, we extended a call to Pastor Kyle Winter to come and be our Maple Site pastor. He will give us an answer before Christmas, and hopefully he wraps it up in a nice bow for us. <laughs> and our school um, feasibility study, we've been assigned a consultant now. We will be meeting with that consultant in January, and uh, with this process will be completed in the school year. So we are right on schedule for our Project 320. The rest of the announcements are in the folder. Today is a very special day as worship is led by our music and the Word of God in that music. So I invite you to open up your folder, and as we stand with our invocation, please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Oh. 
Isaiah chapter 25. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces. And the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy, for eye to eye they see and return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has barred, has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God.
Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the hot desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd, he will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young.
Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for gathering all who are here and those online. Lord, now send your Holy Spirit, stir up within us a listening ear, a believing heart, and a love for you that will not end. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For those of you that are joining us just today, we are in the second week of a sermon series. We've been going through the readings of Isaiah, and there we find that we have a love story. There is this beautiful, wonderful couple, and they've been madly in love until things went terribly wrong. As often in a real love story, things aren't always as they seem on the outside. But on the inside, it was quite awful for this, the woman in the relationship, the beloved, who has been loved from her youth by the lover, she has been unfaithful to him. And so for a time, he has separated himself from her. But during this separation, which was very difficult, she has now seen what she has lost. She has taken stock of the one whom she has hurt. And there she remains in tears and sorrow. Will he come for her? Will he forgive her? Word is sent today, and that is our theme today. Word is sent that he will come, and that he longs to be with her too. He has forgiven her all of her sins, and soon he will be there. I wish you were here. I miss you. My heart longs for you. I wish that I was there too. It won't be long and then I will come. Belonging. The not being there, that is our day today. We are not face to face, but one is coming, and his heart too longs for us. Isaiah would write it this way in his love story. He said, tell the people comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, the relationship will be mended. They will be back together again as they were. And so the big question that remains is, will it last? Will she remain faithful once she's back in his house? Once life goes back to normal, will she go back to her normal? And so again, ruin the relationship. Well, of course, this is all just a mirror of our relationship with God. He has loved us from the beginning, from our youth. He has brought us into his house. And there we have been unfaithful. And we have been separated from God. We are no longer with Him face to face as we once were in the garden. But there in this separation, we have taken stock. We have seen what we have lost. And God has promised to come for us. The question is, will we remain faithful once He comes for us? And that answer is not as easy to answer to just blurt out, because we know ourselves. We know how easily we are distracted. We know how our lives go from one thing to another, and, and we become so busy and distracted. Why, well, just think about if you are in that stage of life, if you're carting kids from one activity to another activity, or maybe you're a grandparent doing the same thing, and you, you want to do this for your kids. You want to give them the richest growing up and, and childhood as possible. So you take them and do everything. But when you find your calendar for the week, it 
just full to the brim with activities, you find also then your heart is full with all kinds of distractions. It's not just kids, it's also our work, which we do to ourselves. We want to be doing what we are doing. We find fulfillment in it, and we find reward in it, and we find ourselves consumed by it so much that our hearts have very little room. Be it a hobby, a, a political cause, some community activity, even, even working at your church. It can consume our time and our activities so much that the heart space, well, it's become very disordered. Something that should be third or fourth on our priority list all of a sudden becomes number one. And there at one, life is not the way it should be. For that number one has been designed to be God and God alone. Will it last? If He's not number one, it will not. Of course, we are not the first people to struggle with the priorities of our loves and, and distractions in fact, you go back to the 300s, you'll find a man by the name of St. Augustine. And there he wrote extensively about disordered loves. And he reminds us that anything that becomes that ultimate in your life, that number one, that is the thing that you look to for your ultimate meaning in life, for your identity. This is who I am. This is what I do. We look to it for our happiness and our security. And if that ultimate thing is not God, the triune Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whatever that thing is that you've made number one, and everyone has a number one, it cannot sustain your meaning in life, your happiness and your security. It will disintegrate and disorder will follow and our life with God will not last. I've shared with you before, there was a man by the name of David Wallace Foster, and he was an atheist. He was a postmodern novelist who, in the year 2008, took his own life. Before he killed himself, he spoke at a commencement address at a university, and there he shared these words about what is ultimate in your life. He said, if, if your number one is money and things, if they are where you tap real meaning in your life, you'll never have enough. You'll never feel you have enough. If your number one is your body and beauty and sexual allure, you'll always feel ugly. And when time and age start showing, you will have already died a million deaths before they ever put you in the ground. If your number one is power, you will end up feeling weak and afraid. You'll, never, you'll need ever more power over others just to numb yourself to your own fears. If your ultimate is your intellect and being seen as smart, you will end up feeling stupid and a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. But our disordered lives and our priorities will not order themselves on their own. No, if we just do what naturally comes to our mind in our lives, we will naturally be drifting away from God, and there at the end we will find ourselves not even interested. And so Isaiah, in his love story, he writes how this love is maintained. What you do and I know that makes us Lutherans a little bit nervous when we talk about this is what you need to do with God. I know that we're saved by grace. But Dallas Willard would remind us that grace is not opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. And not only Dallas, but Martin Luther would, would remind us that faith and works are two sides of the very same coin. You cannot have one without the other. Well, James would even tell us this. Show me your faith. I'll show you by what I do. And even our, our, our Lord Jesus, would, after his Sermon on the Mount, would say, whoever puts these words of mine into action is like a wise person who built their house on the rock. So what kind of effort would Isaiah have us consider and implement into our life? He gives us three things in his love letter. 
The first, I will let him speak. He says, uh, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. If your and my relationship with God is going to go the distance, the effort that is required is relationship maintenance. You have to smooth out the road, the path between you and the, your beloved. And that's true on a human level, too. You cannot have a meaningful relationship without talking to each other, ironing out the problems, saying you're sorry, hearing words of forgiveness. You have to speak about things that really matter. And guys, listen up. You have to speak about emotions, things that matter from the heart. You have to talk a lot. But it's not just all talk. You also have to do things together. You have to play together and grieve together. You have to do projects together, which means you have to be together. This is just 101 relationship maintenance. And it's true so much on a human level, how much more on the divine level with God. And that how can you have a relationship with God if you don't talk to Him? If you're not in a regular conversation with Him, without listening to Him in His Word, without being with Him and in doing things with Him. But Isaiah is not through. He would also have us listen to the next thing that will aid in the relationship development. He said, all flesh is grass, and all of its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flowers fade, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flowers fade. Isaiah is teaching us that unless you have a healthy understanding of the brevity of life, of your life, You'll never have a need to reorder your priorities. You'll just blindly go from day to day thinking that it will never end. But at the end of the day, it ends. You could spend all of your life with your number one ultimate, pursuing it, having the best family life ever. But you will say goodbye to them. You could work in your job and develop it into this monumental business in which everyone is giving awards and accolades. People are coming to learn from you how you did it. But at the end of the day, you retire or you leave it to another. And who knows how they're going to run it. You and I are temporary. The days may drag, but the years fly by. If you have any age at all, you know that that is true. And at the end of it, what has been your ultimate? What has been the thing, the one who has directed and guided your life? Isaiah then would have us consider the very third thing which complements this. He said, he, God, will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those with young. Unless Jesus is your good shepherd, the one who has laid down his life for the sheep, the one who has tended your life, like in Psalm 23, where you have no lack Yes, the days drag, and you feel like you have many things that you wish were different, and you do have a lack, but you know the Good Shepherd is tending your life. You have no absolute lack. That the end of your life, when it is all taken from you, it will be a doorway into a life that is of no end and of no lack. You are being shepherded by the one who holds you close to his bosom, close to the heart of God. If Jesus, if the Father and the Holy Spirit are to be your ultimate, your number one, if your relationship is to last, even as you transgress against the one who has loved you from your youth, you will never be brought to confession. You'll never be brought to a deeper life with Him without the effort it takes that the Spirit is leading you right now into of being in conversation, of doing, of being tended by.
the Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Second Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of, in, to be in li lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, th for these be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace."
Would you please stand for prayer? Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of all comfort, your word alone endures forever. The nations of the world come and go before you. Even kings and rulers are like grass before your breath. Preserve us from placing our trust in anything before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our give ear our good shepherd to our prayers, especially for Rowan Hike and Scott Roberts. Give healing, courage, and perseverance to all who cry to you that they may find comfort in your enduring word and the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life with Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our Father, we know that you are not slow in keeping your promises. We thank you for your patience. We pray for all congregations that are calling pastors, teachers, and other church workers Especially this day, we pray for Pastor Kyle Winter and his family as they consider our call to join the ministry of Ascension Lutheran Church. Give Pastor Winter discernment and clarity in where you would have him serve in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we do gather our tithes and offerings in worship for our Lord. We would invite you to bring them forward and place them in our offering plates. And if you have your attendance cards and want to place those in the offering plates, we invite you to do that at this time as well. We worship our Lord through our tithes and offerings.
St. Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. A star in heaven shone one night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Three wise men traveled by its light. Hallelujah, hallelujah. From all around it guided them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Until they came to Bethlehem. Please stand. Receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.